Okay, so this exercise is an exercise about trying to test a null hypothesis about a coin. And so the general scenario is that perhaps you're going to play a gambling game and you're suspicious about the coin. So you're not sure whether the coin is fair or not. So as an example, I've got two coins here. I've labelled one, coloured one red and it's got a U on it. It's unfair. And I've got another one yellow, labelled fair. So a fair coin will obviously come down heads and tails about equal numbers of times. If I toss it ten times, five heads, five tails. An unfair coin will come, tend to come down more heads than tails or more tails than heads. So it won't tend to come down evenly. So obviously the way to test the coin is to toss it and see what you get. And the little Excel spreadsheet here runs that kind of simulation. So to start with, we start with we press the start over button. And up in the top blue area there, we can enter how many times we can toss the coin. So we'll start with 10. And you can see it's tossed the coin. It's done a summary. It's come up with two heads and eight tails. Now, the null hypothesis we're, we're testing here is that it is a fair coin. So we should get equal heads and equal tails. Before I ask you to make an opinion, the way I've set this up is the computer randomly picks a fair or an unfair coin. I don't know what it's picked here. could be either. And then it tosses it 10 times and reports the results for us to look at. And then we make a decision. What you need to know in order to make better decisions here is that if the coin is unfair, it will come down heads more often than tails. So the unfair coin is biased for more heads. So what we've got here in this outcome is more tails. So the conclusion I should make here is to press the button and say that it's a fair coin. And you can see the computer has checked and agreed it is a fair coin. I've got that decision correct. So now I've made another trial and now I've got nine heads and one tail. So I want people to put up their hands if they would reject the null hypothesis. So if you think here this is an unfair coin based on these results, everybody hand up if it's, you think it's unfair. Okay? And up or down? I, so one, are you up? Yes. Okay, one, two, three, four, I think. Are you up or down? Down. Down, okay. So we've got most people down the same. There's no right or wrong answers here. Uh, so, 12 people here are going to reject an old hypothesis and decide that is an unfair coin. So, I'm going to press this button here. That's a correct decision. We correctly rejected the null hypothesis. Another trial. Four heads, six tails. So, we've got to say that's fair and run another one. Four heads, five, uh, six tails again. Got to do the same thing. Five and five. What do we have to do here? I'm speaking loudly so it goes on the mic. Here we obviously have to accept the null hypothesis. Because five and five is exactly what we would predict to see if the coin is fair. So I'm not even going to ask what people do. I'm just going to put a tick there. Put a tick over there as the predominant response. Fair coin. Another trial. Uh, five heads and five tails again. Another trial. Four heads. I'm getting a lot of those today. Oh. Six and four. Okay, now, hands up here for those people who think it, we should reject the null for six, four. How many people here? One, two, three. Okay, so a much smaller number there, and the predominant decision there is accept the null hypothesis. So let's check that one. That was a correct decision. Four and six. Six and four. Ah! Now what I'll do is, as soon as we've made a decision, I'll apply that rule the next time around. So we just had six, four. We've already 
already said we will accept there, and here's one of those wrong decisions that's come up. In this case, we accepted the null, but it's an unfair coin. So what's going on here? If you toss a coin 10 times, and it's a fair coin, is it going to come down heads five times and tails five times every time? Sometimes it'll come down six heads, four tails. Sometimes it'll come down six tails, four heads. And in fact, the most likely outcomes are five, five, four, six, and six, four. So that is quite a likely outcome if the coin is actually fair. Five, five again. Six, four again. That time we're right. Six, four again. That time we're wrong. Nine, one. We've already made a decision on this one. So we'll reject, and that's the correct decision. 7-3. Now, we haven't looked at 7-3 before. 7-3 hands up if you're going to reject the null hypothesis. So... Everybody has company. So that's a little inconsistent there. So someone's changed their viewpoint, so that's OK. So at 7-3, People have switched. Oh. Five, five. Uh, and here's a case where it's five heads, five tails, and it's actually an unfair coin. Six, four. Uh, we've already decided that one. Just run it through and get a few more. What I would like, I think I put the wrong decision in there. Oh, it doesn't matter, it's still wrong. Um, so I'm just running through a few more trials. I'm trying to get an 8. There we go. OK, so we've got 8. It's pretty obvious what people should decide here because if you're going to be consistent, at 7.3 you're rejecting the null hypothesis and 9.1 you're rejecting the null hypothesis. So at 8.2, you should also get the null hypothesis. So if I ask the people to put hands up, I should see 12 or 13 hands go up. Hands up to reject. Okay, so that's all 13 there. And that's the consensus decision is to reject the null hypothesis. So you can see what's happening here, quite obviously. And if I ask for I'm not going to go through and try and get a 10-0, but if I ask, everyone's hand is going to go up and they're going to reject the null hypothesis there. So what you can see is when it's five, five, five heads, five tails, we accept the null hypothesis because that outcome is consistent with the coin being fair. As we get to 6-4, the opinion shifts a little bit and so maybe we should reject the null. The evidence is starting to suggest the coin is not fair. Once we get to seven heads or eight heads, pretty much everyone is convinced that it's an unfair coin. And at nine heads and ten heads, the same is also true. So as the evidence gets stronger that the coin is unfair, people are more likely to say and conclude that it's unfair. Now what we're doing there is all that you do with the statistical test. Just the statistical test gives us a measure of how likely it is, how likely our results are if the null is true. So it doesn't matter how many calculations you go through, and some of the tests are complicated, they're just trying to tell us, yes, if the null is true, these results are likely, or they're not likely. Now, let's switch over here. And here we've got a page which shows the results, so the first column has got the count of heads to tails. The next column has got the actual probability for that coin that it would come down heads. So you can see that most of those are showing up as 50%, but some show up as in red because those are unfair coins. They're biased coins. So the first coin was fair. The second coin, which had came down with nine heads and one tail, 
this unfair, it had about a 90% chance of coming down heads, and that's the result we got. And we looked at those results and said it was an unfair coin, and that was a correct decision. So the column that says result one is just, was our decision correct or incorrect? The next column has a little bit more information. So for that second coin, we rejected the null hypothesis correctly. OK, um, reading down, we have to go down to here. Six heads, four tails, 60% chance of a coin coming down heads to get the first time we made an incorrect decision. And you can see there the chance of a head was 60%. That's exactly what we got in the results, six heads, four tails. So it's a moderately biased coin. It's not strongly biased. And because it was only moderately biased, most people decided that it was a fair coin. But that was an incorrect decision. And in that case, we accepted an incorrect novel hypothesis. We accepted wrongly. So we should have rejected where we actually accepted. That is a type 2 error. Type 2 is where you accept the null when you should reject it. Uh, reading down further, when we get to that coin there, seven heads, three tails, it was actually a fair coin. The chance of heads and tails was equal. But by chance, it came down seven heads and three tails. And because of that, we decided to reject the null hypothesis, and it turned out that was incorrect. So we rejected the null hypothesis incorrectly. We rejected when we should have accepted. We decided it was not a fair coin when in fact it was. Now I'm sort of going over and over and over laboring the point, but I just want to make it clear that what we're doing is we're looking at a hypothesis given the results we've got and making a decision. And most of the time, we'll get it right. So the table here shows you correctly accepted and correctly rejected. So in total, over there, we've made about 65% correct decisions. And if you add in one or two where I accidentally pressed the wrong button, the percentage of correct decisions will go up a little bit to probably around about 70%. However, we're also making a fair number of incorrect decisions. So something like 30% of the decisions are incorrect. Now, you have to realise that there's not a lot we can do about that. You mentioned about increasing number of tosses to 30. So one way of decreasing the number of errors is to collect more information. And so in this spreadsheet, you can increase the number of tosses up to 30, which will give you more information, but it won't completely eliminate errors, as we discovered. You can still end up making some mistakes. Now, the last thing I want to do here, while I'm still recording, is switch over to this page here and put in the results we've got. So we've got 13 people in total and So 13, 12, 13, uh, 13, 3 and 0, and over here, 0, 1, 0, 0, 10, 13. Um, 
And one thing I forgot to do when I was setting this up was put in the other line. Um, what you can see here is the line that's indicating what's happening as the number of tails increases, except it's not labeling it correctly. So the bottom action here should be five tails. Bottom action there should be going the wrong way. Five tails, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, as the number of tails increases, we are more likely to reject the null hypothesis. And if I plotted the acceptance, it would be the mirror image. So the rate of accepting would just decrease the other way. And what that actually indicates is there's a balance between making a type 1 error and making a type 2 error. Because what you have done here, by setting 7.3 as your cutoff, 7.3 is where you've switched from accepting the null to rejecting the null. By setting that as a cutoff, you're accepting evidence that is a little bit weak. 7.3 is not very unlikely. It's moderately unlikely, but it's not very unlikely. So if I stood here and tossed this coin 10 times, coming up 7 heads, not that unusual. So, having this as the cutoff means that I'm going to say the coin is unfair rather often. If I move the cutoff up so that I'm only going to reject the null when it's 10 heads, then I will, every time I reject the null, I'm going to be right. Because 10 heads, zero tails is very unlikely. In fact, one chance in about 10,000. That's why I wasn't going to sit here and keep going over and over again. Every time I do this, occasionally we'll come up with a 10 head zero target, but it's quite unlikely. So if you say I've got to have 10 heads to reject the null, you're putting the evidence bar up very, very high. So you won't make a type 1 error, but you will make lots of type 2 errors because there will be lots of coins that are weakly biased that you will say are OK. So there's a the balance. Now that's why I say there's no wrong answers. As you go up towards 10 heads, zero tails, you're tipping the balance in terms of absolutely rock solid, no argument evidence that the null is false. As you go down, you're saying, I'll take weaker evidence, but that means that you are more likely to make a type 1 error, more likely to say the coin is unfair, more likely to come up with a false positive than if you're accepting a stricter rule.